This is a ViewSonic 21-inch monitor, model number VP211B. These monitors were manufactured in 2003 and 2004. At the time, they were very high-end monitors. They're, in spite of their age, they're really quite good monitors. They are a resolution uh, 1200 by 1600. They have a 4x3 form factor, which I prefer, you know, for getting work done. All the monitors today, it seems, are uh, what they call wide screen. And that's great if you want to watch a high definition movie, but I, I find for actually getting work done, monitors like this are better. Now, um, I have repaired several of these monitors, and what I found is one of two problems. If the monitor is completely dead, then the problem is going to be on the power supply board, uh, specifically bad capacitors. And if you know anything about electronics made in Taiwan or China in this time period, bad capacitors were very common. If the monitor does come on, if you get a solid power light but no picture, um, specifically no backlights, then the problem is going to be in the inverter. And we will look at both of those. Now, this particular monitor is dead, so it's going to be in the power supply. So we're going to open this up and see what we can do. The back is held on by four screws, one, two, three, and four. And we're going to go ahead and remove those screws. Okay, now I've pulled out those screws. Next step is we have to separate the uh, plastic back from the rest of the monitor. In order to do that, we have to separate this this bezel from the rest of the monitor. We have, to, we have to pry it loose. The back and the bezel are sort of clipped together. There's multiple little clips. And these things are put together pretty tightly. Um, just kind of have to dig a screwdriver under there and just sort of slowly pry it all up. Um, the thing is the bezel in this is pretty thin. Very thin bezel, very easy to crack it. So. Just got to be careful there. Okay, I'm going to start at the top and sort of slowly work my way around. Okay, got it all pretty much pried off. I usually I do the bottom last in this case because that's where the button board is. Want to be particularly careful there that you don't damage the buttons or the cable that supplies the buttons. Now with the bezel all loosened up, we can go ahead and lift off the back. We're going to have to start by removing this metal shield first because it's actually holding this one in place. We have four we have uh, four screws here. One, two, three, four. We'll go ahead and remove those. With those screws out of the way, this can now slide downward. There's a bunch of clips holding on on here on so you have to pull it down in order to release it from those clips. And we have a power supply board and a main board. With this shield no longer holding this in place, we should be able to slide this one back and out. Thus revealing the inverter board. Because the uh, monitor is completely dead. I'm getting nothing at all. 
no power light or anything. It makes me think the most likely suspect is the power supply board itself. We need to get that out and get a closer look. Now we'll have to disconnect this cable that connects the main board to the power supply. And we'll have to unscrew that screw right there. The, the, the tricky part is getting out this uh, socket here, which contains the uh, socket for the, the uh, power cord and also the on-off switch. There are little tabs behind here that are holding this in place, and you have to kind of depress them and then force the whole thing this way. So the power, so this socket is going to be displaced downward, and then you, you take the cords that run through it and slide them up. Okay, I've worked this thing forward. That is really difficult. There are, there's two tabs on each side, and you've got to kind of depress them and push forward at the same time. It's quite difficult. Now I've got to turn this thing such that I can get these to line up and get this uh, connector out of here. Okay, I finally worked this through. This took me quite a bit of time. Slowly, there's just not a lot. There's just not a lot of room here. They just made these cables a little longer. But by just sort of working it through one wire at a time through this narrow, this narrow uh, passage here, I might just take a Dremel Moto tool and just cut that a little bit wider, just so it'll be easier going back in. But anyway, now we've got this out. Let's get a closer look at it. Okay, we have it out. We can examine it more closely. One thing I noticed right away, there's a little bit of swelling on that capacitor. That's always worrisome. Open circuit or low capacitance. So well, that doesn't look very good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull that capacitor out and test it separate from the circuit. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've desoldered this part from the board. And when I did, one of the leads just fell right out of the capacitor. It wasn't really in at all. It just fell right out. So this capacitor was essentially just disconnected. It wasn't providing any capacitance at all. Uh, I've actually seen this before on these capacitors. It's Tycon, this Tycon 400 volt, 150 microfarad cap. I've seen them fail catastrophically like that before. So this could certainly explain the fact that our monitor is doing nothing at all. So We'll have to replace that capacitor before we go any further. Well, we've discovered that we have a bad main capacitor here in the power supply, but as long as we have the power supply board out, might as well do some other easy checks while we have it out in our hand, because who knows, there could be other things. Stuff we can do with a simple voltmeter, like just check the fuse, or check the diodes in the full wave rectifier or check the big transistor that drives the uh, big uh, transformer in this switching type power supply. Just easy things to check when you've got it in your hand. Also, if you have a capacitance meter, you might have a quick look at these uh, capacitors. Now I did all those things and everything else checked good. I couldn't find any other problems so far. Another thing to keep in mind if you order another capacitor, um, the one that's in there now is 18 millimeters in diameter and 36 millimeters in length. And that's important because you really don't have a lot of room they sell them in different sizes. Um, they do sell them in a 42 millimeter length, which, by the way, is not going to fit because you're going to bump into that little cap right there. So if you're going to order one, make sure it's 
you know, 36 millimeters in length or shorter. A word about the uh, power supply board. If you have to remove one of these chips, you should know that they are glued onto the board. They're not just soldered in, but in addition, there's glue underneath it, quite a lot of it actually. In one of these monitors, I did have to remove this chip here, IC1. And I learned the hard way just how glued in it was. Even using chip quick on all the pins, I still couldn't get the thing. I ended up having to pry it off and it caused some damage to the board. There is a circuit trace that runs directly underneath it that can be damaged. Um, I was able to repair the damage uh, and get the thing running, but still, keep in mind, these chips are glued onto the board and uh, they can be pretty tenacious. I've decided to go ahead and just cut that slot a little bit bigger with my Dremel Moto tool. It is really hard to get that board out with that narrow slot. If I just widen that a little bit, it'll make life a lot easier when I go to put it back in. Now I cover everything with rags because I don't want little metal flakes landing on the circuit boards. They could potentially cause short circuits. So hopefully none of the metal will end up in the wrong place. And always wear goggles before you work with something like this. Okay, I've finished cutting that wider slot for the uh, power connector and the, and the uh, power supply board. And you can see it just fits so much better now. Just pops right in there way easier. And it really doesn't affect anything else. It doesn't affect the structural integrity at all. So in my opinion, they simply made it wrong. I made it too narrow to start with, and I just improved it. Now here's our power supply board with the new uh, 150 microfarad capacitor in it. We're going to go ahead and put this back into the monitor. We have to twist our little cable down here to so much easier now since we widened it line it up with the slots here and here and here and then slide it from right to left there we go connect the cable to the main board and then pop in this power supply switch Snap it in there. Okay, good. And we can go test it. Now, with that big capacitor replaced, I've gone ahead and uh, connected the monitor to a, a AC power and a video source. And let's see how she does. Yes. It's working beautiful. So that's the problem. And we fixed another one. Now, just a word about this monitor. Remember, there's a power switch on the back. You have to throw the power switch on before hitting the power button on the front. Otherwise, it just won't do anything. The second thing about this monitor is Although it allows for VGA input, DVI, analog input, and DVI digital input, it doesn't select or switch them automatically. So when you plug in a video source, you may have to hit the select button a couple times before it will uh, lock onto it. Okay, that's it.